one obvious weakness of the retest method is that people remember what they answered in the first test. So in case of a personality questionnaire, um, which is presented at test point one and then maybe two weeks later, some people tend to give the same answer like they did two weeks ago because they want to present a consistent image of themselves. Um, we could also say they want to be reliable. So even though they might feel quite different from how they felt two weeks ago, they might have the tendency to answer the questions in the same way they did during test one. And in case of ability tests, like an intelligence test, it can happen that some people who are very conscientious begin to search for similar tasks on the internet because they want to improve their results in the second intelligence testing. So this would be a, an unsystematic change which leads to an underestimation of the reliability of the test. So these are some weaknesses that can be overcome by the so-called method of parallel test forms. The idea is you don't present one and the same test, but you present two slightly different parallel forms of one and the same test. The difficulty about the parallel forms method is to create the parallel form, especially in uh, personality questionnaires, maybe a questionnaire on charisma, you already tried really hard to find the right items, to find the right questions. And now you are supposed to find even more items that are slightly different, but measure exactly the same like um, your original charisma questionnaire. And this sometimes can be really difficult. So the parallel forms method is not that frequently used. In case of ability tests, it's usually a little bit easier because, for example, in case of a maths test, you just have to exchange a number. Let's suppose the original item was what's the result of 3 plus 7. And so the parallel item could be um, what's the result of 2 plus 7. And participants probably won't have much difficulty in solving both items. So there's going to be a high correlation between solving the items from test form A and solving the items from the parallel form B. Another method that is more frequently used is the so-called split half reliability. All you do is to split your test, your questionnaire into two halves and correlate them. Because in order to be reliable, both halves should be measuring the same. So in case of an intelligence test, you can use the so-called odd even method, which means for the one half, you choose the odd items like one, three, five, seven, and so on. And for the other half, you are going to correlate with test half one. You choose the even items like two, four, six, eight. This usually works quite well. And one really big advantage of this method is that you don't need a retest. You can present one and the same intelligence test at one time and later on you split the test into two halves and then you correlate the two halves. This is not only more economic because sometimes it's difficult to get the participants to the laboratory for two times. Another advantage is that there are not going to be unsystematic changes due to the time interval between the two tests. Because if you chose a retest method, it can happen that one group of people had to uh, 
solve intelligence tests for another occasion. And so this group is now going to score higher because they are now better used to solving intelligence tests. And this obviously would decrease the estimation of reliability. The last method we are going to talk about is also very often used because it's very practical. It's the so-called method of internal consistency. Like in case of the split half reliability, which in fact is a method of internal consistency, we try to find out whether the items of our test all measure one and the same thing. So in the split half method, we correlate the two halves. But you can also correlate little parcels of items or single items with the rest of the test. So if all items of an intelligence test or of a personality questionnaire correlate with each other very high, this is an indicator for a high internal consistency. And the items reliably measure the same thing. Usually in test manuals, the so-called Kronbach's alpha is reported in respect to uh, internal consistency. So that's been the episode on reliability, another really important quality aspect of measurement instruments that needs attention if you are developing a new test or if you are struggling about which test to use in your scientific, school psychological or clinical context. <music> <music>